justify his top seeding in Group 7. He's just made the highest break of the tournament so far, a 144 to take a 2-0 lead over Liam Highfield in sure, have a good match. his group decider. If Murphy wins 3-0 or 3-1, he will progress to the, the last 32 next week. Jeremy, have a good match. OK. The first frame. Jeremy Clark to break. Here's a surprise. Jamie Clark, Judd Trump, first ever meeting this. That's a little bit surprising that Jamie's been around a few years on tour. So that would be a nice, nice moment for him. It's always nice playing the game's top players. And if he can get a win or a draw, extra bonus. Just mentioned Sean Murphy's 144. I'm obliged to say that the previous high break was also a fine effort. 141 from Matthew Selt. That'll cheer him up. Yeah, good lad, Matt. Good player as well now. Very solid. But 144, some effort. Yeah, funny situation. This, these you get sometimes get this in these last group games. I've uh, the previous two years I've been in this exact situation that Jamie Clark's in, needing a draw in my last match, and I've failed miserably both times. The funny, funny old mindset you're in. Obviously, you set out to win the match, but you know deep down just a draw will do. Sometimes it can work against you. Judd, on the other hand, knows exactly what he's got to do. It's actually not dissimilar to a, a football team parking the bus and trying to get a draw. I think you need to free up your mind and play normally, because playing for a draw clearly is not normal. Look at Sean Murphy here. What a great chance in the third frame against Liam Highfield. On the cusp of winning the group. If he does win the group, Murphy, Ben Mertens will be really unlucky to finish second with seven points. We've had players winning groups with five and six points. He looks like coming second with seven. Well, yeah, he will be very unlucky. I've seen quite a few of Ben's games today when I've been in the players' lounge and he's played it very, very well. And hopefully it gives him the confidence to go on and have a good debut season. I have to say, I've been very impressed with him today. But back to the match in hand, and Jamie Clark had the first chance, but really got into that cue ball. Way more action on the cue ball than he was anticipating, so he's left himself a pressure brown to the middle here. Will be leaving red, should he miss it? Jamie Clark ball. If this was mid-season, if Trump was in full flow, I'd make him a big favourite, especially with a chance early on. Mind you, it might not be the chance that we first thought all balls covering each other, it seems. But it's not mid-season. He's clearly rusty. And I think Clark has a, a real good chance here. Of the top players, they've got a few gears in their armory. They seem to find them when they need them. Six. So I'm not saying Judd will win this match, but I expect it to be his best performance of the day, Seven. regardless of how it pans out. 
Will Murphy is on a break of 79, so he's going to win the group. And tidy things up with a 3-0 win over Liam Highfield. It's a matter of whether he can close the day with back-to-back -back centuries. That will do a lot for his confidence, which was well. undoubtedly eroded last season. It does look like being a century, doesn't it? The pink should be a formality. So the man who Liam Highfield said wore clothes like David Cameron has endured a landslide victory. Nice. He will make his Brexit, sorry, exit feeling really good. Well, got to say, Phil, it was worth the wait. We've waited all day for it, and it was well worth the wait. Oh, that pink just wriggled in. Never easy when you're bridging over a ball. Easy just to flick 25. a bit of unwanted side on. I don't think... It's definitely not landed where he wanted to land. Sort of in between shots now, and nothing is straightforward. The only red available is this red to left middle. We need a good pot here to keep this break going. Got to control the cue ball as well. Come around the back of the reds and the black. Maybe enough to stop him from taking it on. Just from 25. Well, that tells you one thing. The attitude is right. The desire is there. A little bit thick that time from Jamie, but not sure if this red is potable. Well, it was potable, and he absolutely middled it. That was a wonderful strike from Judd Trump. You could hear the noise the ball made as it entered the pocket. Hit that one about as good as you can ever hit a snooker ball. Controlled the cue ball nicely for the pink, and... He's created the second chance for himself in this frame. Seven. Already got a nice 30-point lead, so be looking just to chip away here at these loose reds. Eight. Just, 
50. Now he yeah, might sure. go the cube. Yeah, he's getting the cube all cleaned here. That was a, a very strange contact. Kicks have been largely eliminated because of the widespread adoption of the tome chalk from Finland. But I don't believe Trump uses it. No, Judd's still on the traditional triangle stuff. And I also noticed that Peng also in this group was using the old traditional style chalk. So two out of the four players, the balls don't get cleaned in between matches so you can't always visibly see the chalk on the balls but there'll be some on there floating around and if it just catches it the wrong spot then kicks are going to be maybe a possibility in this match but hopefully it won't spoil anything for either of the players 28. you're obviously a, a convert joe yeah i am phil a, to be honest, my main reason for changing wasn't so much 29. the kicks and stuff. It was that the new chalk doesn't leave any marks on the table. So when you're practicing for long hours, you don't get a table full of chalk marks and things. It just made just made life a little bit easier. But it's definitely had a positive impact, I think, on the game. Like I say, each to their own. Whichever you feel more comfortable with, then use it. But I think in general, it's had a positive impact on the game. We don't talk about kicks hardly at all now, which is a good thing. Or indeed, ferocious bounces. Another good part from Judd there. So, 57 ahead, 67 on. He needs 33. A red and any colour. Thirty-four. Now, that was so sensible. He took on a, a risky ball, yes, but he knocked another one close to the side cushion, knowing full well that would be an insurance policy were he to miss. But he didn't, and now the first frame is under lock and key. Portsmouth. By the way, David Hendon has texted me the result of the competition, which I will give you at the start of the next frame. Trump 50 on the first frame. Well, the last frame against Sean O'Sullivan and the first frame here have been the best that Judd Trump has looked all day. He needs to win this match to top the group and he has made the perfect start. He leads 1-0. Judd Trump leads Jamie Clark 1-0 in this match to determine who will win Group 2 of the Bed Victor the Championship League. Judd Trump to break. Though with Jamie Clark needing only a draw, 
It means he needs two of the next three frames. Ditto, his opponent. Long red opportunity here for Jamie Clark. Sort of shot that modern day professionals practice quite regularly. And there's what? the result of lots of hard practice. Practice makes perfect, as they say. That was a nice pot for Jamie Clark. Needs to get in this frame and maybe not win it this visit, but at least get some momentum, get some pressure on his opponent. One thing we know about Judd Trump, tremendous front runner. He won't be afraid to win. Doesn't shirk at the winning line. Now up to Jamie to apply the pressure. We've seen evidence of this all day. He's getting so much zip on the ball, as much as anyone. Not just in today's groups, but in the, the tournament as a whole. Another example of it there. It's a beautifully played shot. Struck that one so nicely. Doesn't hit the ball hard either when he generates all that spin. But that was perfectly controlled. And did that cue ball exactly Thanks. where he wanted to. And over that sort of distance, it takes a lot of skill to be able to do that. So this is exactly the reply Jamie Clark was looking for. Just give us a minute, please, Jamie. Yeah. Thank you. Now, while Rob Spencer is working out where to put the pink here, I can give you the result of our competition. So basically, the question was, Judd Trump won last year's Champion of Champions at the University of Bolton Stadium. How many frames do you lose on the way to capturing that title? The prize, two tickets to see Judd Trump play in the Champion of Champions this year, which is back in Bolton Thank for a you. week from October the 31st. Well, the winner, and congratulations to you, it was Samantha Hayden from Cambridgeshire. As for the amount of frames that 50. Trump lost, remarkably, in his four matches in that 16-player event, he lost five frames. Started out with a 4-1 win over David Lilly. Then he whitewashed Ryan Day and Kyron Wilson 6-0 before beating John Higgins 10-4 in the final. So, well done to Samantha. Hope you enjoy your day at the snooker. 20. Well done to Judd for playing so well in that tournament. And well done to our quiz master. The inspiration behind that really good question, Joe Perry. Clark, 20.
So an aggressive safety shot there from Jamie Clark. Bringing Reds into play, always dangerous. You never know exactly where they're going to finish. So chance here for Judd. What? A lovely pot. That was the main objective in that shot. Would love to have missed the cannon on the red, but the main part of that shot was make sure the pot keep control of the table. So it's only going to be a one break, but chance to get a good Rumble. safety shot in here. See if we can force Jamie into making an error on his next visit to the table. Just something. It's not task complete if Trump wins this frame, but he's well down the road to success if he does win it. hit safety what? but the red has somehow found its way into the green pocket another indication of just how fast these tables are that red traveled a long way never looked for a moment it was going to get that far at the table but Judd will be mightily relieved to see it drop in again it's only going to be a one well. point but could have been very costly but it stayed over the pocket When our pal Michael Holt came in to commentate almost immediately, I forget which match it was, but it was a top player and they had a, an outrageous fluke and he couldn't help himself. He said, yeah, they always get the flukes, don't they? They being the top guys. <laughs> and as that red was going towards the pocket, I was thinking about Michael. Because Judd is part of they. The elite. Well, as we know, it's not, that's not technically true. Everyone gets flukes, but it just seems worse when they get them because they normally make the most of them. So the fluke is compounded normally by a big break to follow. Everyone gets flukes for and against. It's a decent shot from Judd, but it may be a gap here. Can he get down the side cushion to get to the red nearest the left corner? If he can, it's still a very tough pot, but I'm not sure what else he's got on offer here. He does play a similar sort of shot to what Judd played. Got to be very careful. That pink will be looking very, very big from where Jamie is. It's a big obstacle to try and get round should he play a similar shot. Contact avoided. Did well, but a bit unfortunate to leave that red available for Judd. It was going to be an easy return. And this is a very important little safety encounter now between these two. The table has become far more inviting. Reds have been brought into play. Big colours are available, so very important for the whatever player it is to get the next chance because you feel it will be a very, very telling one.
I know Judd hasn't been at his free-flowing, high-scoring best today. But I have to say, some of his safety play has been top-notch. He's played some very, very important safety shots at the right time. He's just played another one there. So Jamie's got himself out of a couple of sticky situations so far in this frame, but he's going to have to find another one now. At first glance, there's not a lot on offer. We know he's got a lot of Q power. We might see a little bit of that here. Unless he can get through to the red, possibly take it on, can he? Again, he's played another containing shot. He's just holding Judd at bay at the moment. But until he plays a more positive shot, he's going to keep finding himself down that end of the table in trouble. He's doing well at the moment, just holding him off. Well, he might be happy with the white there, Trump. He certainly won't be happy that the red is nestled up to the blue. It's to his advantage, you would think, if the table went entirely open and one of the high-value colours, for now, is out of commission. Foul. Just Trump foul. So not guilt edge chance for Judd Trump, but it's a chance nonetheless. He can play this red with a degree of safety. As long as he gets close to the pot, he should be able to manoeuvre the cue ball back down to Bork. And I think anywhere, somewhere in the middle of that Bork cushion, he's going to have the pink waiting. So half chance. Well, Jeremy Clark for. Well, even Judd Trump, who's a wonderful potter, can miss a ball of that difficulty. What was surprising, the, the directing off? Actually, in many respects, did him a favour because had the, the cue ball jangled around in the jaws and stayed at the business end of the table, Clark would have, more likely than not, had an easy starter. Nothing wrong with Jamie's shot. I've got to say I'm a little bit surprised he didn't take one of those reds on with white in hand. Normally very, very strong long game. It was a red had he taken on. I would have fancied him knocking in, but obviously being a little bit cautious, waiting for a better chance. Sometimes that better chance doesn't always come along. Trump would love to take on the red closest to the top right-hand pocket, but he's not entirely convinced the gap is there. It's clearly borderline. He's looked at it on more than one occasion.
Unlucky and lucky. Take your pig, Joe. You go at it. Well, I can see what you're saying, but I think I'd be putting them the other way round. I think it's lucky first. Yeah, you can't you can't be unlucky to not land on a colour after you fluked the red. It was a bit of a miss hit from Judd, as you can see, where the cue balls landed. So just he's played some good shots, but he's just riding his luck <coughs> a little bit here. He's made a couple of errors that he's fluked a couple of reds in this game. Okay, they haven't led to a chance, but they've definitely led to his opponent not getting a chance. Green ball. And a chance again now for Judd to get the upper hand in this little exchange. Just Trump ball. Well, that's worked out a treat, but he did not intend the cue ball to go that close. That was too close for comfort. gap through to the red just won't present itself this has to be potted what very nice yeah good pot that had to be careful the in off in the middle was always a possibility so clearly pink is available, but just looking a few shots ahead here. What he'd love to do, ideally, if he can get down the cue ball down the table, is get the red away from the right corner. That opens up the black. So he's played on the Seven. red just left of the two. Be looking in a few shots time to move that red I just suggested away from the right corner that really opens this frame up Eight. yeah it may play down into an area here because it wouldn't be a bad thing if he can pop the red on the black spot first that way, in potting the red, followed by the black, the black will go on its own spot. But it all depends where he's landed 11. here. He might be awkward queuing for that red. There you see. Yeah, in an ideal world, he'd play the red on the black spot, but it's pretty tense out there. Probably feel he can't possibly miss the red nearest the right corner, so may go that way round. Yeah, I think Judd knows this is the correct ball. It's not always the easiest part is the right shot. This one probably gives him better chances of winning the frame at this visit. Twelve. Again, just finished in between. Another roll of the cue ball there to be nicely on pink or blue. As it is. Got the blue, but it's awkward queuing over the pink. And potting the pink, it's going to be difficult to get on that red near the right corner. So, a little bit of work to do here. Just some 12. Didn't expect that. It is tough sometimes when the cue ball is close to the object ball to judge the, the potting angle, but we did not expect the pink going wide. I'm sure Jamie Clark pleasantly surprised. Thanks, Jamie. One.
So if Jamie could just Some. cut this red in. In doing so, just nudge into the red directly above the black. Give himself a great chance of levelling this match up and getting one of the two frames he needs. Well, Eight. he can in the black first, but it's not going to make too much difference. But just looking at the scores, 13 in front. Blue puts him 18 in front, so regardless of what colours he takes, he's going to need all the three remaining reds. So still a bit of life in this frame yet. Fourteen. Key shot coming up. Pot this red and leave himself perfectly on the pink. Can then leave himself he can leave himself a natural angle when potting the pink to cannon into the red. Twenty-five. Jeremy Clark. Twenty-five. And drop on the last red, but that's a, a pretty good way to depart the table. a better shot than it looked. It was a tough shot Judd was faced with there. Had to catch that red just right. But a pretty straightforward safety shot here for Jamie Clark. Send the red up the table. He's got quite a few colours you can use as a blocker between the white and the red. Can get this cubal in behind the black if he plays it perfectly. Just a little bit too hard, but like I say, there was a lot of colours there in his favour. So it looks like he's got the snooker, so not difficult to hit, but Judd has to get it safe. Trailing by 30, Jamie just needs one more pot. That's what they call in nine ball pool a kick and stick. Hitting the object ball and stopping the cue ball dead. Yeah, 
Yeah, we've got another one of them situations where, you know, normal circumstances, a 30-point lead with one red left. You think you're a big favourite, but the way the table's situated, one bad shot could be very costly. This time, I think he's left the gap, has he? But again, look at the speed of this table. Thought that red was going to pull up and be a possible pot for Judd Trump, but it just kept rolling and rolling. And again, looking for full ball contact off the second cushion. Not quite full ball this time. But he'll be more than happy with that outcome. A couple of flukes he's had, and now that one. Luck's only side in this frame, even though he's 30 behind, 35 on. Had he avoided the pink, more than likely, Mark would have been snookered. Mind you, given the pace of this table, you can't even say that for sure. He needed cover, Joe, and he's not got it. No, it was a tough shot he attempted there. I just feel Jamie's he's played some lovely shots in this frame, but I just feel he's been a little bit too cautious. I thought he might have had a pop at that. It was, One. you know, the, the safety was just as difficult as the pot, and normally in that situation, you'd, you're always better off going down with the positive shot. So he'll be hoping now that Judd Trump slips up somewhere here, but he pots this and gets nicely on the yellow. Wouldn't expect him to make any more mistakes. True, but on a couple of occasions today, he's been in to clear and not done it Eight. with a, a positional error. And the brown being off its spot here makes the, the positional shot from yellow to green just that little more difficult. Well, first, you've got to pop the it's yellow, Judd. It's his first day of competition this season. And there won't be many times during the course of this campaign where he plays a worse shot than that. I was just about to say exactly that. You know, Judd Trump would be very surprised if he plays a shot as poorly as that this season. Not only the pot missed by quite a way, but the position was out as well he's now in trouble so he's had his chance so got to try and somehow conjure up another one well, you have to say Phil I hope Michael Holt's not watching this at home because he will be having kittens about now wow Foul and a miss. Just trump four. Well, I don't think this one will be going back. But like you said, Phil, it was a very good spot from yourself with the brown being where it is. Doesn't look like it makes that much difference, but it really does. Normally there's a big margin of error to get on the green, but that brown's just making it a little bit awkward. Two. And I think He's played to cannon the brown there. Not a bad choice, but obviously once you miss the cannon, Cubo's going to be travelling. 
Oh, I think, all in all, I think we can say Jamie Clark not necessarily deserves to win this frame, but he didn't deserve to lose from that little passage of play. Saying that, thinking Judd Trump won't be taking this green on, but you never know. Such a great potter. Could be looking to get a real telling safety shot here. Again, just a little bit thoughts? short, so this frame's still very much in the balance. Yes, Trump needs all of the colours. Clark, 16 ahead, he needs green and brown. Jamie's body language. Got cover on the green here, so this is risky. If he misses it, bound to leave a free ball. Foul. Well, I say bound to miss, leave a free ball. Not if he hits the brown, obviously. Just from four. But that looked like it was going to be pretty awful for Jamie Clark. But where the brown's finished, I think there's every chance Judd Trump will be having these balls yeah. replaced. Yeah, really good point, Joe. Obviously, the green was a an easy starter, but with the brown awkwardly under that top way. cushion, I Is think ball, Judd made the right so. decision there. More so. Oh. A bit more, man. A bit more, yeah. Come on. Hold on. Yeah. It's warm out there, so Judd directing yeah. traffic from his right. seat originally. Right. right. So it's got... So, so, yeah. It's probably about there. Is that okay? We're both happy with yeah. that, yeah. If he's coming there. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's all right. <laughs> Jamie? Well, the desired result for Trump, five colours away from stealing a frame in which he's really struggled. Cheers. Thank you. Three. Just Trump three. Normally in that kind of situation, he would be deadly. But as he got over that brown, I don't know about you, Joe, but there was serious doubts in my mind. Yeah, he's normally so clinical. When that chance presents itself, clear up and steal the frame. But not just in this match, in all the matches today, he's, he's not taken them clearances when they've presented themselves and again I suppose he can count himself a little bit fortunate when he missed that brown at that sort of pace he could easily have left the pot on for Jamie well, this time he hasn't got the full ball contact on the brown this time he has left the pot and this is one that Jamie Clark definitely won't refuse Everything goes into this brown, guaranteed to be on the blue. Big shot.
Yeah, well done, Four. Jamie Clark. He's had a few bits of bad luck against him in this frame, but held himself together well there. That was a good pressure pot. Nice. Yes, even the most ardent of Judd Trump supporters could not possibly say that Jamie Clark didn't deserve to win this frame. Fifteen on the frame. So the stock of the Welshman rises. That of the top seed in the group, Judd Trump, falls. He needs to win the last two frames now to justify his top seeding. It is 1-1. It's been quite a day at the snooker, and the most dramatic might yet be still to come. Group two is undecided. Judd Trump needs to beat Jamie Clark to top the group. If Clark gets a draw, he will top the group, the world number 49. This is what they're playing for. It's £3,000 if you win one of these stage one groups. But if you get all the way into stage two, then three, and ultimately win the final, which is over the best of five frames here a week on Friday, you will scoop 33,000 pounds, 33,000 world ranking points. If you've not already qualified, you'll be in the champion of champions and you'll be well down the road to a place in the World Grand Prix. So, basically got two deciders coming up. Well, Judd Trump needs them both. Jamie Clark needs just one of the two. An early chance for Judd Trump. Try and put behind him some of them mistakes he made in that last frame. A few chances to clear and take a 2-0 lead. Situation's very clear now. Knows exactly what he has to do. Can't afford any more mistakes. Can't afford to drop any more frames. Maybe that'll just help him focus fully. Get fully concentrated. Five. So that previous shot tells us the black isn't available yet into this left corner. So at some time very soon. You'll want to play down on the red above the black. And again, looks like he's Ten. massively overhit that shot. He was playing for the red on the right hand side of the table. This is a thin one. He's left himself. He's got Good it, but couldn't control the cue ball. So again, not what we're used to seeing from Judd Trump. Normally great control of that cue ball. You do feel, though, that he's going to go for this now. Won't be holding back much more. Take this brown on. Keep this break going. Just Trump Hill it's just not quite happening. He's trying hard, but it's just not quite there today. Well. 
That's a nice angle off the blue if he chooses to go into the bunch at pace, but on the other hand, he'd probably like to move that red away from the black first. Yeah, a little bit shorter pace there. May have to Six. change his plan of action, play the other red first. Seven. Of course, the psychology here is interesting. Clark knows full well that Trump is susceptible to defeat, vulnerable more than normal. And sometimes that actually increases the pressure. What a fluke that was. Did well to get his hand out of the way. Twelve. I'll tell you what, the hand was withdrawn literally a split second before the blue arrived. That could have been painful. Thirty. Well, he'll probably feel he was uh, due a fluke of his own. Judd's had a couple, but like we said, Judd's flukes just presented him with a safety shot to follow. That one has actually kept the break going. A couple of good positional shots here for Jamie Clark. I wonder if he'll play into the bunch here. The red at the left of the pack does pot into the right corner. But it did seem like a nice target to go into. And he's played that nicely. So could that fluke be the start? 60. At the end for Jamie Clark. He'll be hoping so. There's a few loose reds here he can pick off. Doesn't have to do too much. Seventeen. Twenty-two. Overdone that one slightly, so play a ball colour now, unless he wants to play into the four reds. The red at the bottom left of the four think is potable to this right corner. So anywhere pretty much down this side of the table he's going to be on it. I think he's looking just to pick these off here. Oh he's gone the other way so tells us that the red above the black is available. And if 26. he plays this shot correctly it's definitely all there for him to win frame and match at this visit. Key shot coming up. Twenty-seven. Looks as though Trump will have another life. Paintball. Jeremy Clark, 27. The big guns in snooker find a way. Stuart Bingham did yesterday after losing his first match 3-0 to Peter Devlin. He won the group regardless. Sean Murphy today had to win his last match. Did so hugely impressively with a couple of centuries. 
So he's through. Can Trump find some inspiration and scramble over the line? Oh, he's too red, Jamie's looking at. Look very close to a plant, but I wasn't sure at first glance whether he could get past the blue. I must think he can, it's very tight. And if they are a set plant, then I'm expecting to knock it in, but depends how much he can see of that first red. One. Oh, he couldn't get through to the two reds at the top of the picture, but he managed to somehow make a plant out of the other two. So that was a very well judged shot from Jamie Clark. It was far from set. Back in. Won't have to worry about the difficult red or the black being tied up. He can do enough here. These open reds and the blue. That was a good pressure pot, you'd have to say. Five. Looking pretty strong now. Six. As David Hendon mentioned earlier, had to win a match in qualifying for the World Championship this year to safeguard his tour card. Just about got the job done there. Went from strength to strength thereafter in the qualifiers. Made it to yeah. the Crucible. 11. And now he looks like perhaps starting the new season on a high. 49th in the world rankings. They're winning a group here. Would do wonders for him. Yeah, and the way he's played that blue tells me his <laughs> two reds are pretty much set. There you go. Doesn't have to do a lot with his first red to send the other one online. And this is a great chance now. 12. Wow, well, in saying that, just push that other red down towards the black. So it's never straightforward, is it? Getting across that winning line for the lower ranked player, the lower seed always seems to have to make hard work of it. So, gonna need one of the difficult reds now to secure this frame. 70. But first, he's got to pot this one, get back up top side of the blue. Now he's got plenty of Q power, he's going to need it here. Eighty. Nothing ambitious at all. Ball. So Trump still punching. He's behind on all the scorers' cards, though. Jeremy Clark. And it's down to the 18. 11th round. Yeah, you feel he's going to need just a lucky haymaker or something to get himself out of this. 34 behind. Jamie Clark didn't do a great job in putting the Browns safe, but he's come back to the table with opportunity at another difficult long red. It goes in. You feel that will be the end. He's psyching himself up for it. He knows this is match ball.
by his standards, Trump's been very poor today. He's been not even in third gear, I would say something lower than that. And yet, you can't fault his attitude, his application. He's really trying. Professional. Yeah, I think we can always say that about Judd. We never see him give anything less than 100%. OK, he doesn't always play at his brilliant best, but he always tries his hardest. And that's why he's so difficult to beat. Like you say, Phil, even in fourth or fifth gear, you still got to give it every respect and scrape him off the table. Around this time last night, Hossein Vafai looked certain to lose his group against Tian Peng Fei in the final match, but he won the, the penultimate frame after needing a couple of snookers. Got the draw he needed and went through. And what a pot that was from Trump. Is that the, the spark of inspiration, the catalyst we've been looking for? Just Trump won. Well, he can still win. He's 33 behind with 35 on, but yes, too many balls are being missed by Trump. It's as simple as that. Thirty-three adrift. Thank you. That means he needs either pink or black off the last red. He's going to clear up and getting from pink or black onto the yellow. Looks highly unlikely, Joe. Where they sit at the moment. Yeah, I'm not saying he won't win the frame, but I don't think he'll win it in one visit. Try to be looking. I still believe there's hope. He can somehow find a way of playing a safety shot to release the pink or black from the side cushion or even lay a good snooker and get some penalty points so he doesn't have to rely on pink or black. Go, very clever shot there. Got the red safe, brought the black into play, so tables can very quickly turn in this situation especially when you've got the player in front playing very defensive and the opposition player playing very attacking difficult balance to weigh up if you're Jamie Clark here you don't want to take anything risky but at the same token you're always giving your opponent a chance to play the aggressive shot Still a big favourite here, of course, but got to be careful. Yeah, and that's always a good plan when you're 33 ahead with 35 on. Snooker your opponent. That's never a bad idea. Oh, Judd, it's a must hit, otherwise you'll need a snooker. He's hit it, but has the red got enough pace to get past that middle? Bet it has. Always the way. Always remember, semi-final of the 2002 World Championship. There was a red coming down the table. Had it bounced or stopped before the top cushion, Matthew Stevens would have potted it and been in the final. As it was, it stayed on the cushion. Peter Ebden won the frame, won the match in the end, 
and won what? the whole thing. But I'm sure now that Judd Trump isn't going to win this match. After that, again, payback. Payback, Joe. What? Yeah, two flukes each, Phil, but I think Jamie's have been far more beneficial. Nothing like fluking match ball, is there? Jamie Flatwell. I went into that history lesson say. because I thought that the frame was going to be very much alive with another safety, but Jamie Clark, how fortunate was that yeah, to get over the line? Him. He yeah. might only get a draw in this match, but for him, that is sufficient. He is going to win Group 2, and there's just one more frame left today, but it's academic. It's been a lengthy day at the Bed Victor Championship League. Day 14 of the tournament. Jamie Clark, though, for him, it's been a profitable one. Frame. And now Judd Trump, he break. knows the score, literally. This will be the motorway shot, surely. Oh. Very surprised. <laughs> very surprised. Like we said, he's very professional these days. That's why he has so much success. But I'm pretty sure if there's a pot on, he'll be going for it. Even if he loses, Trump will be second in the group. Sean O'Sullivan third, Peng Yi Song last, and Jamie Clark advances. He becomes the, the fourth Welsh player into the second stage, the last 32, together with Daniel Wells, Jamie Jones, and Mark Williams. And Clark slots into a group that is Luca Russell. Wells, Chris Wakelin, and him. By the way, a little earlier, Sean Murphy with back-to-back -back centuries to complete a 3-0 win over Liam Highfield. That was enough to win Group 7. He made a 1-4-4, did Murphy, in that match. So the 2005 world champion, he goes into a second-phase group. An all-English affair with Ricky Walden, Elliot Slesser and Anthony Hamilton. Well. Keep your flukes for when they're relevant. Look at that pack, by the way. Unbelievably Sweet. intact. Yeah, just the two reds that have been potted disappeared. Four. The rest is as they were. Not for long, though, I anticipate. I expect them to be far and wide after this shot. No holding back here. Oh, there you go. And that's another one I've got wrong. The pack's still it's intact. Four. Both players looking just to get this over and done with now. And as always the case, neither of them can pot a ball. All irrelevant, really. Nothing at stake whatsoever here. The group's already settled. We've been fortunate in this tournament that quite a few groups have gone right down to the last frame. Well, 
but of course it's inevitable that you do get a situation like this occasionally. We had one group where Lu Ning won his first two matches. He was guaranteed to be the winner of the group. He was playing Oliver Lyons last. And Lyons, having lost his first two matches, was guaranteed to be at the foot of the table. So a whole match was dead. But that's very much a rarity. Thanks. Yeah, the way the groups are set up with the the way the no. seeding works as well. More times than not, it comes down to the last match, which is always what you want, really. It's the best way to finish, but times like you say, Phil, it can't be helped. It's just quite a difficult situation, really, for both players. But at least we might get to see some Judd Trump flair and exciting shots in this frame if he can string a few together. 40. Yes, and of course, if he wins the frame, he retains his unbeaten record for the season. Fifty. I know it's happened to you in the past, Joe. It is possible. Happens quite a lot, actually, where players don't lose and yet still they're eliminated. Yeah, I think I had that in my very first group in this competition. I think I had three draws, and obviously that's never going to be enough, is it? But twenty-one can be quite frustrating. I think I was two new up in two of their matches as well, so only myself to blame. 22. You don't think you were two nil? You know you were two nil. Come on, <laughs> you never forget. No, the, the the therapy's not working well enough, Phil. Is it? I still remember all them bad beats. Well, that's more like it. That's more like a Judd Trump 27. split. Reds everywhere. Twenty-eight. Thirty-three. From match one, he's never got to grips with the table, and positionally, he's been ineffective, mistake-prone in that regard. I'm sure it's only a minor blip, of course when he gets into the, the full swing of practice and the season gets into full swing, he will be formidable as usual. Just from 33. Yeah, it can happen, can't it? You know, just a few little positional errors just stops you really getting into the flow of the game. That's been the case for Judd today. He played a couple of nice frames where you think, right, he's he's on it now. He's he's up to his best, but very next chance he gets, he just plays a loose positional shot and that snowballs into a missed pot. It's been the story of the day. That's why they say snooker's all about fractions, and it is. You know, a couple of them clearances, he had the chance to punish his opponent. Didn't quite see him through it's just halted his progress today never really looked comfortable out there but take nothing away from Jamie Clark he's done what he had to do he's played some decent stuff today six fresh in his first match looked very good which is what set up this Seven. chance of course by winning his first match 3-0 give him the edge going into this final match so no one gives you these groups, you've got to earn them. Twelve. Thirteen. So 28 completed groups, 16 top seeds, eight second seeds. 
Marks the latest addition to that list. Three third seeds and one bottom seed have progressed. And over the next two days, we've got four more groups. 60. Complete this phase of the tournament. 70. I'm sure Jamie Clark won't mind in the slightest. He goes home to South Wales to Clenethley with a full complement of prize money. 24. 25. There will be better days for Judd Trump. Much better days. And that's Rolls-Royce. 32. Q action starts to, to purr. Watch out. 33. 40. Just from 40 on the frame. So there it is. It was an anticlimactic end.